This is the Scrap Metal and Commodities Recycling Report by Ben Lee and Riley and Goldsberg Recycling, April 10th, 2017. Back from India. Last week, commodity prices and economic reports were mixed. U.S. steel production declined again, which may be driven by imports of rebar and automotive production softening. Oil rose a dollar to $52 a barrel, about double last year's 27 low. Problems in the Middle East continue to put upward pressure on prices. The oil rig count rose yet again to now 672, the highest in 18 months, which is helping jobs and stabilize commodity prices. The great news is this is still down a huge 58% from the high of about two and a half years ago, so there remains a major upside. Iron ore spiked $11 to $92.5 a metric ton, closing at a multi-month high. This could be an adjustment for a major drop in recent weeks due to the spike makes little sense. Scrap barrels prices show steady on this chart, but next week they will show an approximate $28 per gross ton drop. U.S. production declines remain an issue, but global growth remains okay, so prices could stabilize to rise in the coming months. Despite market softening, hot dip galvanized steel rose slightly to 910 a metric ton on somewhat steady volume. Here's a picture taken yesterday of downtown Queens, New York City. Of the seven high-rise buildings in the skyline, five are under new construction, and the low-rise large dark building in the foreground is also new construction. Steel use in commercial construction is strong. Stainless 304 scrap remains steady at 37 cents per pound, yet again on no new news. Copper fell a penny to 265 on no major news as well, and is down another 2 cents this morning. But the five-year chart shows we remain near two-year highs. Copper inventories, while coming down a bit, remain elevated, putting downward pressure on prices. Aluminum stayed flat at 88 cents on solid demand as construction, aerospace, and automotive all remain strong. The Ford F-150 pickup truck, the highest selling sales volume car or truck in the U.S., is very aluminum intensive, had its sales up 10% year over year in March, while GM's pickup truck sales were flat. The five-year chart shows aluminum prices remain near multi-month, multi-year highs. Aluminum inventories continue to fall, hitting new about nine-year lows, keeping downward pressure on prices. It's only a matter of time until new production comes online, which will stabilize the increases. The ISM Manufacturing PMI Purchasing Manager Index fell a bit to 57.2 and is down slightly from February's two-and-a-half-year high of 57.7, with new orders, employment, and exports all remaining strong. Non-farm non payrolls grew a disappointing 98,000, the lowest growth since last May, with major cuts in retail, but growth in mining and business services remain good. Automotive sales have been weaker this year, with March sales annual rate being 16.6 million versus 17.6 last March. This will put downward pressure on steel and copper prices. The U.S. unemployment rate fell to 4.5% in March, a new almost 11-year low. A great thing for the economy, which is starting to bring wage pressures. But the labor force participation rate, which is all people 16 years old or older that could be working, is still only 63%. That means 37% of possible workers are not working, which does include people in college and high school. The rate has been as high as 673 in the year 2000, so people that re-enter the workforce will help keep inflation down. The Dow Jones Industrial Average was flat, ending at about 20,658, remaining near all-time highs, which remains positive news. As always, feel free to call or email me with any questions, and we hope all have a safe and profitable week.